what if this is all we have What's up, everybody? Once again, it's your boy, Defri Deem, and we're here with another shot of discourse. This time, this is a special edition. We got a dope episode today because I'm in my hometown. As you can see, the studio looks extra crispy, extra nice. We're with Slick Productions today. But I also got the Johnson Invest on my podcast. Clap it up for you. How y'all doing? What's up? Good. What's How up? are you, Kareem? Going? There we go. There we <laughs> thank go. you, thank you, Kareem, Good. for having yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank Shout you out everybody. to y'all. So, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably don't know about my show. I got some episodes in the tuck, but what we like to do is get a little bit loose. And Pat, I want to take a, a shot of uh, something that you brought. You know, we Let's can do we get the conversation <laughs> popping off that way. Yeah. So, wait, what did you bring us? Uh, so this is the finest of cognac. This is Martel, my company, Pinot Ricard. It's basically their competition against Hennessy. It is. Pour your own troubles. Pour your own troubles. <laughs> and they holler at us about what that is right there. Straight from France. Mm. Blue Swift is the uh, version that became very popular. Keep it open. It's just, we don't, we don't sip on that. <laughs> And then uh, Humble Flex, you've been to France before. You guys been to France? Yeah, we've yes. been to France. Yeah, we've been to France. Talk about, talk about that experience, man. Flex, flex, on, flex on the group, because you guys are travel, uh, what do you, <laughs> travel crack addicts. <laughs> I feel like we you like, guys are like just like murdering countries <laughs> as like <laughs> time passes. What's going so, on? So France was basically, when we got married, we were, we were looking for our... Um, our anniversary. Yep. We had friends, at least from my job, they were able to send me out there. I was inside of this photography like event that was happening called the Paris Photo. Mm -hmm. So they chose me out of the 18 regions from our different company. How many to, black people were in that photo shoot? That was the only black person. In that photo shoot. <laughs> <laughs> so they chose me. Shout out to, to be the token. <laughs> They chose me to represent, uh, you know, North America through yeah. this. So part of the, uh, during our honeymoon, actually, we got married on the 9th of November. It was actually after that. I think it was on the 10th, mm -hmm. 11th, and 13th was actually Paris Photo. Dope. So we're able to get flown out there for free from my job, stay at a hotel. They hooked us up with tickets. We met the photographer. We you know, went around France for a little bit, came Took back. Took some dope pictures, too. Took some dope <laughs> pictures. Shout out to yeah. photographer here. <laughs> photographer here. Yeah. And then we went on to our real honeymoon yeah. in St. Kitts. St. So. Lucia. St. Lucia, yeah. sorry. So, like, the, the so for, let's let's do this shot real quick. Cheers. 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 We'll do a air shot. Cheers. <laughs> Delicious. So, one of the things that I see people do, they're traveling all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And... Posting up fly pictures, going all around the world. I think like our culture is really getting into embracing, mm -hmm. going all over the place. But for you guys, I feel like you're really good at attacking certain deals and mm -hmm. you know <laughs> figuring out ways to fly for free yeah. and different things. Talk about that, or tell us about like how you kind of track down these things. Um, well, I'm a person. I just love saving. Okay, <laughs> something doesn't feel right with yes. just paying full price for things. Yeah. So I'll definitely just explore. Um, just even. Being my family, knowing people in the travel industry, growing up, having my mom in the hotel industry, it's just like when you know people don't pay full price for things, it's like, why should I pay full price for things? Right. Um, another thing for travel, what we do, we always go when nobody goes and we go where nobody goes. Okay. So t technically, you'll always find deals. Like if somebody's constantly going to Mexico, the flight's always going to be expensive. So y'all not, right? not going to Tulum? Not no, we're not going to Tulum. <laughs> <laughs> she been to Mexico way too many times. Yeah, okay. I've, been, I've been to Cancun a lot of times. Right, but right. um, no, but uh, if we find a deal, like, yeah. yeah, sometimes you might have to fly out the Tuesday. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. might have to fly out the late night, come back the early morning. Flight. As long as, luckily, like our jobs are flexible, so that makes traveling a lot more flexible for us as well. Unless like people traveling the Thursdays to the Sundays, those are usually the most expensive routes. Yeah, I was gonna ask you for a couple of hacks of like how do you kind of travel, kind of find the lower fares. But I, I think people are doing that. I think it's like we're trying to, you know, everybody's using Google, uh, yeah. Google flights, yeah. getting the alerts for their Sky tickets scanner. and stuff like. Say, say, Sky what? Scanner. That's Sky what scanner. you guys are using now. Yeah. Yeah, it's an awesome site. Or even like Kayak would, would give you, and then Kayak gives you the feature where it's like you could do two days before, two days after, so it right. gives you like a whole range of where you want to go. Or sometimes you can look at a month and it'll tell you when the cheapest time to go exactly. and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, that makes it just a lot easier. Okay. Yeah, any site that does that, so Kayak as well as Skyscanner does the same thing. 
and it looks at multiple different airlines. So yeah. you can, if you're if you're flexible, you just basically go in there to look for when you want to travel to a certain place. Yeah, it's gonna give you the cheapest place out of the whole year you can search through. So mm -hmm. it makes it easy. Also, I would always recommend just sticking to one airline if you can. It might be a little more expensive in the beginning, but you eventually those points accumulate. You know, okay. you, uh, you you eventually get more status with that airline. Cause y'all so, rep Delta, right? You yeah, got, with Delta, with Delta, Delta for multiple reasons, yeah. but yeah. Delta with both medallions on Delta. Um, what do you? Not yeah. So once platinum? again, another plug for my job. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> So what, they, you a they, free promo now? Yeah, no, no. Oh, well, okay. I don't even know if he dropped the name, honestly, but you good. <laughs> there for a while. So, yeah, yeah they, so they, they hooked us up. They actually had a contest. They had a person come in because um, we have, like, a membership with Delta mm -hmm. um, for, like, our discounts and whatever. So they came in. They had happy hour inside of our, our office, and they gave away tickets. Part of the tickets was a free Mets game, I think it was. We went to the Mets. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that showed up, you, you just Delta need to show box. up. And they gave you, it was a year and a half of gold status. What? Just because mm -hmm. you're an employee. Dude, so I've been trying to tell you, get me into that. I company. was able to do it. <laughs> so long. I was you able shouldn't to... have that job. <laughs> <laughs> I should have that job. I was able to message, and it was like, yeah. But one of the fly things fly. about even your, your office space, which kind of like made me be like, I got to get to like a more flyer you know, type of company mm -hmm. was that when I first went in there and you were you showing me around the different floors and things like that, but you guys have like a bar and it kind of, you had a view overlooking Manhattan and I was like, yeah. I got to step my game up. <laughs> 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 I work in a, a like a closet. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's <laughs> probably the, the best part because every office has a, has a bar on mm -hmm. site and they always have happy hours. So some offices are smaller. They usually will do it whenever it's like a certain event, maybe like Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever. But since New York is where basically everything is, right. where all the CEO, where all the executives are, every Thursday is a happy hour unless there's something else. Sometimes it's Wednesday, Thursday. Sometimes it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. But, yeah, it was it's dope. So as you guys are, like, accumulating points, using, all, like, your job perks and different mm -hmm. things to, to travel, like, tell me what is the the reason behind it. Like, what's the purpose of seeing the world and, like, getting all these experiences? Like, what's driving you guys to Kind of um, I would say so we're really into like art travel mm -hmm. um, adventures so mm -hmm. we really very rare we would ever do a beach vacation like yeah. I don't remember the last time we did something like that nah, but we always end up doing like exploring going to see different sites like I'm really big on just like the world um, growing up I always liked mathematics and like social studies Yeah. so just being able to see like the history of things meeting different people you know tasting different food like and you know sometimes it's different reading it in a textbook versus actually like seeing the people the okay. local people learning about the culture and things like that right so that's what's really big like for me like as far as travel for me it's like more like adventure it's, it doesn't even have to be international i could go <laughs> three towns away and i'm learning something new about that town going to check out that museum things like that nope yeah. So to elaborate on that, I would probably say it's it's just enjoying experiences. Yeah. So as we got to know each other, as we continued through our relationship before we got married, we we didn't even like giving each other gifts like yeah. that as much as like other couples would, or they save up, you know, people buy a bag, they buy this, they buy that. Because for us, it, it's really just about the experience. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's flipped from, you know, I'd rather save my money, go to a nice restaurant, wherever it's going to be. <laughs> Before that, before we, we, you know, got out the country, it was just going to nice restaurants in New York, yeah. you know, doing road trips, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I spent mad money the first birthday. <laughs> we just drove to Boston. It was fun. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. But yeah. I was like, we could have went on a whole excursion. Uh, yeah. We could have flew somewhere. We could have did all this stuff. So as we continued with this experience journey, it was just like, let's continue this experiences in different places because, I mean, the world is... It's, it's so open. It's like, it's yeah, beautiful. there's so many different things to experience. And I, I think, like, even when I talk to, to my wife and it's like, we've only been in this area or this mm -hmm. this small piece. Mm -hmm. Like, I've been traveling ever since I was young, going back and forth to Jamaica and everything like that. But yeah. that's that was my window. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. only Jamaica. So now it's like, man, going to Africa and okay, seeing yeah. things over there is is crazy. And the thing is, like, there's no price on that type of experience, I, yeah. I feel. You know no. what I'm saying? But the uh, going to Applebee's or going to like this yeah, different yeah, restaurant. Yeah. It's like, Same why thing. do that? Yeah. Like even if, even if I'm going to Jamaica, I'm going to. Why am I going to Kentucky Fried Chicken? No, that makes exactly. no best. Well, the chicken be hitting though. Well, yeah, you, you gotta, yeah. <laughs> I recommend eating some Jamaican Kentucky Fried Chicken, 
But the, you know what I'm saying? Like, why why try to enjoy the chain things when there's just so much of the world yeah. to experience? Yeah. I will say I'm never going to go to Europe, though. Why? Why not? That's where they invented slavery. Uh, why would I go there? I don't know they invented why? it there. What are you talking uh, about? What about Africa and the people that, that sold the slaves and everything? The US <laughs> Africa. That makes sense. No. No? No white people. <laughs> why would I go to a place where they make them? I love white people, man. I love my white yeah. audience. But at the same time, yeah. nah, nah. Nah. There's a lot of Africa to explore. There's a lot of, you know, uh, South America to explore. So I hope that. Well, you could do both. I, I mean, the world's ever changing. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, back in the day and Europe's, things Europe's have Europe's on, on the last. Well, what about, about America? Time. I'm here. <laughs> and plus, my wife, man, she wants to, like, she got, like, a shopping vendetta against Europe. I ain't. <laughs> Oh, uh, right. we ain't ready for that. We ain't ready that speed. <laughs> but shifting gears, I wanted to talk to you guys also about like, first of all, y'all mindset is just different. And mm-hmm. I wanted to um, bring guests on that kind of are pushing cultural boundaries mm-hmm. and different things like that. You guys just celebrated your son's first birthday. Yes. Shout yes. out to him. Well, um, but I wanted to talk about the gift that, which mm-hmm. I will contribute, by the way. I didn't get a chance <laughs> to yet. But um, talk to me about the gift idea and and what you guys actually did for uh, Carter. I'll, I'll let you go in now. So um, we decided to just have the link for his 529. Mm-hmm. So uh, even a lot of people don't know, even before getting pregnant or if you plan on having a child, you could set up a 529 and then you could just put like your, you just set it up through your account. I already have it set up through my job. Okay. And then when you do find out you're pregnant, like I'm not a person that's like, Prepare ten years in advance for a yeah. kid, but you do find out you're pregnant. You could automatically set up whether you want to take a hundred out each check, two fifty out each check, whatever. And then when the child's born, you just add the social. So before you know yeah. it, the money just automatically accumulates. That's what limited and me because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't set up Alexandria because we had an issue with her. her the social, social stuff. Oh, so yeah. I didn't even know you could. Yeah, do that so you beforehand. could do it prior, okay. and then you add the social later okay. on. Um, so before you know it, I mean, even he was born last year, the stock market, like during COVID and things just started booming. So like, before you know it, money just like accumulates. So another thing, we also practice like minimalism. So Mm -hmm. it's just like, we don't want to have a whole bunch of toys, clothes. He grows out of every second. Like we didn't mind people bringing things, but we specifically said like non-toy gifts because we already have him like all the toys he needs and things like that. So we just sent the link to his 529 account and it's crazy because a lot of people like complimented us on that. It's like, oh, that's amazing. And sometimes people like to feel like they know where their money's going. Mm-hmm. And um, you, like when you see the link, you already see like Carter's name and you see my name and everything. So it's automatically linked. And it's just like you, you're you able to just contribute like anytime, any holiday, things like oh, really? Even people that, yeah, anytime. So the link is for, first of all, shout out to you. How did yeah. you, like what company is this that this is just through my job it's a five really? it's a new york five through nine okay okay but mm-hmm. it, anybody really could get it All another right. thing sometimes the state sponsored ones are cheaper with fees and everything mm-hmm. versus you're going to like a bank and try to get the five two nine the fees are a little higher right. so i just do it automatically through my job i don't see the money another um thing is just like now depending on the state that money is not only for college. Like you could use it from um, K to twelve expenses. That's what I was gonna say. So not a lot of we want to send them to school, private yeah. school. We can just can pull the that. money out. Yeah. So let's go back and break down the five twenty nine. What it is, because I don't mm-hmm. know if we actually like defined it. So sure. give give them a. Uh, a breakdown of what you're using the 529 for and how, like, why you set it up. Basically. So it's an educational um, savings plan. Yep. So if, say, for instance, the money is after tax, so it's after I get paid and everything. So you want to put $100 in today, and that money turns out to be $150 in the next two years. Mm-hmm. The government allows you to take out $150 tax-free. Yeah. So people don't know that. So it's just like the money, like, literally just accumulates. You're just allowed to save um, for educational expenses. Right. And, again, they open it up. It's no longer just college. Colleges, not and I forget even colleges. They allow trades, you know, a vocational schools, things That's like that. That's what I was gonna so, say. A lot of yeah, people don't understand yeah. the power of. First of all, the concept of setting your kid up mm-hmm. for success at that young of an age. Yeah. I don't think we we really yeah. understood, yeah. or our parents didn't really understand. I didn't have like you know uh, a, a fund when I went to school, and somebody was like. Hey, make sure you get your books mm-hmm. out of this account or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure you guys, I don't know if you guys experienced the same mm-hmm. thing going through school, but mm-hmm. not a lot of people understand that this tool is there. Um, you could contribute. Mm-hmm. It grows, right? It's sort of like your your retirement fund, right? Yeah. Yep. And then um, the tax advantages of it is like it's so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You're getting compound interest. Mm-hmm. So like you might have to contribute up until what? He's like, Carter's like 10? 
Or like what? Up until um, decide what he decides to do. Okay. Yeah. And if your child or whoever you're assigned to decides not to, if you have nieces and nephews, Let's you could assign it. it. Or yeah. if you want to go back to school, sign it back to you. Yeah. Like you know, there's so much power and the flexibility in what you could do. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 just a very powerful tool. Yeah. So um, for me, like I I don't know if my parents had it, but we went to Catholic school, so they did a lot of like the susu. Okay. So like I've seen it, and it was like four of us. You so gotta explain to Susu. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you just said a word where, <laughs> oh, where Jamaican people say yeah. it. What do you guys call it? Jamaican is partner. Yeah. I think it's partner. partner. Yeah. Oh, so the Susu. So then that's how they were able to just like save up and yeah. just and then And this is where thing. a group of people yeah. come together. Yeah. Somebody manages that group's money and uh you kind of just like it's like a shared savings. Yeah. Yeah. And somebody gets a draw, mm-hmm. right? During a certain time yeah, period. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the definition of what a Susu okay. is. I think it's similar, same thing to a partner. For unfortunately for me, I've heard nothing but horrible really? things about uh, a Jamaican partner. So I will never be part of it. But like you said, dude, like as long as you're contributing and you you have some type of saving discipline, yeah, that's what kind of yeah. I think you're you're alluding to your parents yeah. utilize that money to bring you guys through Catholic school and mm-hmm. things like that. Super super dope, super clutch. Now when she brought you that idea, were you like? Man, my man needs toys or whatever. Like, well, you were just on on board with it, hundred percent. Nah, that's that's the thing. We 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 kind of link and we connect with a lot of these ideas together. Yeah. So, we bring different attributes to the table. Like, we'll have different ideas, different things, but we always have the same goals. So yeah. From the beginning, we didn't want Carter to have. I mean, we've seen that in other people's houses, other people that we know. Massive toys all yeah, over the place. Toys crazy. all over the yeah, place. Yeah. It's clean up, and quite frankly, you see. You see this all the time. Mm-hmm. There's a kid playing with like an empty water bottle. <laughs> and he got all these toys. I laid swear, out. I gave I gave Alexandra yeah. an empty water bottle the other day. She was, she was having fun for hours. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're waving it around, mm-hmm. or they play with the box the toy came in as compared to the toy. So right. we, it, it becomes like you know, it's it's redundant to just continue to buy things for them that isn't gonna benefit them, and it's a waste of money for the people that are wanting yeah. to contribute to that child. So Dope. putting it to an actual fund that you know it's not a hundred dollars that the parent could sneak off with yeah (laughs) it goes directly to an account that has to be used for something so now you guys are both contributing to to the 529 like your your Uh, it comes directly from my paycheck any money carter gets uh, additionally we add it Uh and pat just adds like whatever he wants yeah yeah super dope exactly so now you said an interesting piece uh kind of like y'all mindset is already gelled like Mm -hmm. usually maybe pat goes to idea with you you go to idea with pat Mm -hmm. but you guys probably are thinking in like the same yeah, yeah. same pool. Like when you guys got married, obviously probably things were different. Maybe you weren't on the same page. Talk. How what, what was that journey like for you guys to kind of like form that mindset, form that togetherness of like this is how we're gonna handle money? Because that usually is one of the biggest like d- wedge drivers mm-hmm. in in relationships. I'm trying to think. I think we were on the same page from uh from the beginning. Yeah, think, the, no not arguments. The, not the beginning, but I was about to say, um, no arguments. Because he because somebody like, had a somebody <laughs> had a uh, uh I think it's a BMW or something like that. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, somebody okay, had like a sports car. Nothing was wrong with that. I think somebody <laughs> was like flying through the city looking <laughs> like Batman. <laughs> At one point, you <laughs> not not that. It was my idea to even get rid of. We had two cars, and we we're like, we don't need two cars. You okay. know, like you start thinking about the goals and the things you want. It's just like. It, I feel like it just came, yeah. came together. I feel like we, we, we met each other with our own issues in terms of like how we viewed money. But mm-hmm. as He's we, a spender, y'all. Don't, don't I'm, be I'm a spender. That's fine. Okay. You know, <laughs> it, it's fine. But I, I know when to spend. Yeah. You know, and it, it's, it's, it balances each other out. But yeah, we came at each other with different views on money, obviously. As we con- continue to kind of build and grow our relationship, we kind of understood a lot of the things that we had, like we didn't need. Like, right. mm-hmm. quite frankly, there's actually a funny story with the, the BMW. So we was, <laughs> I actually was, was in a grocery store. Some, <laughs> I was driving the BMW. He crashed I was my car, to the y'all. Store. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm being the, the all, gentleman you know I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't crash it. So first and foremost, let's clear the record yeah, straight yeah. to the care. I didn't crash the BMW. <laughs> I went to the grocery store to be a good man. You know, yeah. I was buying groceries. I was going to cook some nice breakfast, make an omelet, you know, make some pancakes. So dude comes running in and he's like, yo, he's like, yo, somebody got a BMW in New York place. I'm standing in the line just think because I'm like, I'm just borrowing her car because mine was like, I think it was parked further. And I didn't even think about it. And I was like, oh, shoot. Yeah, that's me. He's like, yo, somebody hit your car. Get out here. So I run out there. Dude in a big old pickup truck like rolled over Always a goddamn car, the front bumper, pull, pulled it off. Yeah. 
and then became a big issue. I had to wait for the cop. I called her, and she's like, oh, yeah, you know, just, just make sure the cops get the stuff. Oh, you was cool with it. <laughs> yeah, I don't All care right. about I don't care about material things. Okay. Like, that's how I grew up. Like, mm, you know, yeah. my, my mom's just like... As long as you you have life, all that stuff doesn't matter. But the, okay. the running joke is he crashed my car. Okay. Yeah. He was like a little confused. Look back. Yeah. I was, he I was, was like, mad sure. I was like, how am I going to call her about this? This is crazy. Because <laughs> once again, we, that was like us starting to understand where we valued money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that was me understanding that she didn't value material things as much mm -hmm. as she valued basically, you know, Can you just life. say that's the day you knew you were going to marry me? I, uh, I want to say that specific day. But yeah, that's, that's, that was definitely a check in the, the checkbox. <laughs> Yo, so so we saying like we don't like I don't value material things. Y'all know like I'm I'm trying to buy like a whole bunch of Shaquille O'Neal Walmart sneakers and just start rocking those. I am. It's, it's over. It's already, bring them back. Already, not bring them back. <laughs> I'm just gonna start wearing them. But like even with like with my wife, I think we clicked because of Dave Ramsey. Like mm -hmm. I, I had it in my head like ASAP. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I you know when we got together. I could already, like, sometimes the eyebrows were raised when I would do certain things. Or, like, she'd come in with, like, a Chick-fil-A bag. And I'm like, oh, you're spending money on a Chick-fil-A. She'd look at me like, nigga, it's Chick-fil-A. This is $8. <laughs> but it's, like, not a concept of we're always eating out and we're, yeah. not, we're not cooking. Mm -hmm. And then we enjoyed times where, like, we just cooked together and that was, mm -hmm. that, was a, that was a dope thing. And then, like, deconstructing, like, yo, do we really need to buy a Louis Vuitton bag or do I really need mm -hmm. this nice watch or whatever? Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like we went through kind of more of a metamorphosis to like grow together, like be kind of have that one brain, but it was based on the Dave Ramsey stuff. So like, I know you guys followed Dave, but yeah, was like, did you have it? Did you have the idea or was it like, yo, we found this dude and like, mm, I brought I think, it to the table. Yeah, you yeah. brought it. So I was always like the budgeter mm -hmm. and like, I always like save so money. So you were always on the money. Yeah, side. always. Um, credit, everything like that. Like I, but again, that stuff was instilled in me. Yeah. So it, it's different. Foundation. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. What, one of the things that Patrick said, I, I'll always remember this. He's like, man, she just, <laughs> she, she, she's just beautiful and she got a good family, man. She got, <laughs> she got a good family, man. That's what it's all about. <laughs> so it's yeah, crazy yeah, how, yeah, you yeah. know, that That's upbringing. Yep. Mm -hmm. keeps coming back and like you're thinking forward mm -hmm. and you're even taking it to like another level mm -hmm. with your like your generation yeah. you know what I'm saying I know you're saying like people look to you for financial advice and yeah. everything like that so how are you fielding first of all shout out to you for starting did you know financials thank you thank you know you. the IG page follow the, follow the page and we repost all the time and everything like thank that you. but what what are those conversations you're having with some of your friends now do you feel like their eyebrows get raised when you you know, when you talk to them about money? Uh, I feel like sometimes people get lost. So mm -hmm. um, it's actually really funny. Cause, and I have to remember this because, you know, I majored just mathematics. So numbers are like this to me. So I could, even sometimes I'm talking to him, he, the other day something happened, uh, this option that I was trying to buy. And then okay. I would have been like, it was like 2,000 plus percent. Yeah. And he, he was just like, and I was like, ah, I got to call my cousin. Because, you know, like, you know, sometimes people he's not don't. As, he's yeah, not yeah. matching energy. But if yeah, it was like yeah. something with not real not estate it. or something, he'd be like. <laughs> real estate. Yeah, you know, so it all depends on, oh, this, we gonna get I guess, back. your audience. But another thing I did realize, and just starting, did you know, um, and just putting some information out there. At times, I could be talking to a friend, whoever. Or it's just like, they might not be ready to receive it. But okay. that's not saying they might not get back to it eventually, right? Right? Because I had friends that came up, yo, D, you told me this about three years ago. Mm -hmm. I should, I could have listened to you, should have listened. Mm -hmm. But now saying it, like mm -hmm. I understand, and it's like, all right, that's fine, as long as you got it. So for me, I tell people they ask me what I do or what can I do to get. I give you advice, you take it how you want to take mm -hmm. it. But for me, I'm gonna take my advice and I'm gonna continue to. You're not gonna keep asking me how I'm nah, doing it. I'm real I'm petty. You how when you I coach it. somebody and I see them doing bullcrap, I comment right you on call Instagram. Them out? Oh you yeah. Call them out? Oh yeah. I go in the comments like, "What are you doing? <laughs> how much does that cost?" <laughs> no, life happens. I, I feel like I don't know. Everybody goes through their own. Like think about guy, even man. like a year like last year. It's just like people got out of it, and sometimes you know. Like people, I know people that retired. Like I'm just gonna travel. I'm gonna take all these cruises. Boom, shut down. Now yeah. you're home doing nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm not mm -hmm. saying live life, but you can live life responsibly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be living life, going into debt, and doing this for what people doing it for likes and all this nonsense. It's right. pointless, you mm -hmm. know. But yeah. I think you can still live life responsibly because you know life is still short. So, so that's that's an interesting point because you guys, I feel like you guys are probably one of the most disciplined couples mm -hmm. I know as far as uh, money goes. And you're you're still enjoying your, mm -hmm, yourselves, mm -hmm. right? So how do you 
how do you pivot now? You're got you guys are now attacking real estate. How how does that conversation or that day to day of, you know, we're gonna take a trip or like we'll buy this house, take the trip. Like, how are you juggling all of those things? It's it's a lot. It's a lot of yeah. stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> and, and, and the yeah, you know, and Carter, honestly, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Spreadsheets. Honestly, yeah, spreadsheets. Yeah, spreadsheets. Okay. So you guys have like a strict savings plan. For the next house, like how, how does it work? We yeah. have a strict savings plan for the next house. Mm -hmm. Every single expense in any house, I mark down. Every okay. yeah. every income that comes in, like how are you able to really track your goals unless you're, you know, how are you able to see your goals and reach your goals if you're not tracking them? Right. So like I have a spreadsheet, like the money comes in or things like that from the property manager. Oh, we have to do plumbing today or this. And it makes it so much easier for tax. Like right now, oh, yeah, 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 by, yeah. The, by the next um, December payroll, we're ready for tax season. Good. Like, oh, these are all my expenses. And yep. I literally listed the same IRS line items mm -hmm. and literally we'll made it be easy ready for, for it. the yep. CPA. Just yep. like yeah, that. I do the same thing. Just like that. So it's literally just spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. Like, I was yeah. able to do that. Or Pat, like, looks at, he would handle more of the, like, the personal things. Sometimes I jump in with the real estate, but he'd be like, oh, we have extra money this month, or we could do this and yeah. things like that. Yeah, it's basically just keeping account of yeah. everything that's going on, whether it's, you know, how much you're spending to eat. How much money is coming in? How much money is going out? Mm -hmm. And that gives you kind of an idea of where the end goal is on some of the goals that you already have. So mm -hmm. that's that's our whole like formula, if you will. Spreadsheets. Yeah. A lot of them we've shared before, so it's a lot of calculators that yeah. kind of give you the end goal of when something's going to be paid off. Mm -hmm. Whether you put in the interest, you put in the mm -hmm. monthly payment. It, it makes it easy for you, and it honestly just lets you to keep track of everything. So let's do this. Let's, because I, like, I, my, in, on my podcast, I like to, like, dumb things down really slow <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and give people the game and see the vision, like, you can get here, too. So one of the things, um, I remember this call, right? I, I was at yeah. a Heat game, and you called me. He was like, bro, real estate. Yo, son, did you know? <laughs> La. And, yo, I'm literally, it's like half, if it's halftime, and I'm like, yeah, Pat, just just do it. Because <laughs> I already, I think I already closed on. Been at that time. I don't know. I think I was closing on my fourplex, right? Yeah. And then you already had, you were already renting out or doing a renovation at your pop's house. Yeah. And then you were you were thinking about getting another property. Yeah. Now, when you're going into that next property, right? How are you even developing the mindset to say I'm going to? What, what like we're talking putting down twenty percent, finding the deal, talk so, yeah, 20, <laughs> like, yeah. So like, that's what that might insane. seem insane to somebody, yeah. right? Yeah. But how did that? How did you get that discipline? Like to first of all find the deal, mm -hmm. and then save up twenty five percent for a house. It was really it's really a yeah. risk. Um, saving, like I said, I've always saved. Like, um, so that's I've, routine. I've always saved money. Yeah, so and I was always looking together. for things to kind of do. Like I was. So many things. Silence, like I was going yeah. looking for like Chick Fil A. Like mm -hmm. they're like a fake franchise thing. Like yeah. you literally are a manager. So I was looking at some franchising opportunities. Mm -hmm. I've always been thinking um, real estate. Like I've always like my family's in real estate. So that yeah. comes from they got a lot of stuff. Yeah, in Brooklyn. so yeah. a lot of stuff comes just from my family. Uh, my family's always like, oh, get a job and invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. Like automatically. So I always was saving my money. I was gonna buy something in Brooklyn a little prior to us getting married. But then I was like, oh, let's just wait and see. So I already had a good amount of money saved too. You had money too, so <laughs> we looked online and we was like, Springfield, yeah, let's just do it. Springfield, <laughs> it was kind of crazy. My dad's house also definitely helped with the idea of like, while well, no, that house say, wasn't even rented yet. No, I know, yeah. but the, but this the is idea the of it we was just spending. like an idea of basically reigniting that that fire of like, yo, real estate is actually pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. Um, so my dad's friend that was actually helping us with a lot of. The uh, the different renovations around the house, crazy dirt ball prices. Like, yeah. and he's doing like crazy Good work. work. Yeah. So, um, he was like, "Yo, this is your house, man." He's like, you "Try to fix anything. You could do whatever you want. Like, this is you." And I was just thinking about that because at the beginning, I was so headstrong on the idea of you know Dave Ramsey. Let's just get everything cleared. Let's just pay off everything. I wasn't thinking with the idea of like someone like Robert Kiyosaki, where it's more or less. How can you make this money make you money? Yeah, and actually continuing to own the house and just having the appreciation, just by doing the work yourself. I mean, even you was in there helping mm -hmm. me sweeping floors, yeah, we and doing floors and stuff like that. Trying yeah. to find a tenant, and then I'm just like, "Yo, this is actually I like this. Mm -hmm. Like, this is actually dope." Yeah, when you think about it, and I was lucky enough where my parents was able to, you know, have a house that was 
there was no mortgage on yeah. that they're able to give to us. So. And then that I want to pause right there. The one thing that if we can get people to understand, never sell the bricks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? If there's something in your family, try to maintain it. If you got to get two, three jobs, make the, the value of the property appreciate. And I think some other cultures take advantage of the fact that we want the quick dollar. Yeah. And sometimes we're not willing to put the work in or – you can call me and Lamar and Orlando. We just come in there and, and do what we got to do, help you out. Exactly. Um, and then also, like you said, it's almost like you're putting money into something, but you don't see it immediately come back out. Because it was a process yeah. to get your uh, your pop's house like ready, right? Yeah, it was a process. But mm-hmm. we just looking at the numbers and doing the math, I was looking at, okay, if we were to sell it, and this is between like my brother and I, yeah. you know, what would we get at the end of this? And then you do the math of like, well, if we rented it for this amount, how many years we'd make that money back? And then you have to think about it. it appreciation is going to hit, too. Right. So y- there's a there's two different aspects that you're looking at as compared to the money right now. Where's that money going to go? It's going to disappear. You know, money's just burning in the floor with inflation. This is an asset that's going to continue to mm-hmm. grow, continue to make more money. And through time, you can make more money off of rent. So. It just made sense in so many different ways. I had to change my ideas and change my way of thinking. And that was like a fire that ignited like, uh, yeah. yo, we got to. We're, we're looking now. You're one that when you catch on fire, man, you call everybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, what are you doing? You need to buy a house. Yo, yeah. where your money at? <laughs> but but we, I we're, not, we're not too far still from the whole Dave Ramsey principles of course, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. trying to stay away from consumer debt, car notes. Um, another real challenge is just like equity in houses. Yeah. And we don't touch it. Yeah. Like, we have not touched Talk equity. Talk about it. Mm-hmm. So we're still, like, it's crazy because, yeah, we could turn around, keep flipping, take out. But people talk about it. Yeah, get a, um, pull out the equity, buy another house, but your mortgage is going up. Exactly. You know, your, your yeah. that's the income's mm-hmm. increasing. There's a Correct. lot of, yeah. you know, risk there. So it's mm-hmm. just like, but can you save that money and then just buy another one? It might take a right. little longer, but what's your ultimate goal? That's what I'm thinking. So exactly. that's what we're on, just like, okay, it might take us a little longer just to save. And now house, even houses out here just went up. So yeah. it's like... 25% now is crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, it's insane. But you're able to do it. Like, because yeah, of the work that you save, did before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you're, like, you, you kind of see the snow. Like, Dave talks about baby step number two and the debt snowball. Mm-hmm. Now it's kind of reverse. Mm-hmm. Like, now you guys are collecting more and more rents, mm-hmm. and then you're able to kind of pile that into yeah. your savings yeah. plan, and it drives that 25% down mm-hmm. quicker. Yeah. So I don't think people really understand that concept of first – Seeing the invisible numbers yes. in the house, right? So, like, if you know, if you're doing these repairs and you know, like, I did a new kitchen, that probably is going to increase ARV to blah blah blah, and or the equity of my house mm-hmm. just went up fifteen thousand or something like that. But not pulling that money out, having the patience, and then just knowing that if eventually, if anything goes down, I'll sell this property and I could walk away with with X Y Z. But exactly. the bigger game is the rents and cash flowing yeah. every month yeah. and having a house. Like when I thought about it, I was like. Yo, if we can get this property to generate, let's say, like six thousand dollars, or you know, five thousand dollars, that's hours. Like my wife don't have to work at this job mm-hmm. and spend time with the baby, or exactly. I could go do a passion project mm-hmm. or something like that. So when I started thinking about it like that, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this makes too much sense. It's yeah, changer. it's the easiest way to get into basically any dream that you have, whether you want to start a food truck. Whether you want to start a clothing line, whether like a lot of people take that risk and they put it all on their own back. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what's obviously not the best way to do this. If you're to go to any real estate investor or any financial guru, a lot of people will tell you about real estate because it's an easy way to get into the game where you have something stable, right. cash mm-hmm. flow coming in. So this house is making you money every month. Let's say a house is making you at the end of everything being paid a thousand dollars. That's a thousand dollars. You don't have to go out. It's a thousand dollars. You didn't have to work one and you're hour. You're probably not paying absolutely. taxes. On. You may have yeah, to work right. two to three hours a month. Maybe mm-hmm. you know, handling a few phone calls. Maybe somebody's toilet, you know, messed up. A little stuff. Whatever. It's it's it doesn't require you to be inside of an office setting. It doesn't require any of that. That a thousand dollars could pay for maybe that food truck costs two thousand dollars. So you can save two months. Whether you fail or yep. not, it's not of, out of your money. Yeah. So it feels completely different when you work in nine to five. You're taking all that money and still pursuing your goal and your dream. This money that's coming in from this real estate is just funding, whether it's pursuing a pay down of something right. or it's pursuing a passion that you have that's something that you just wanted to do on the side. It makes it so much easier to actually pay for that. So 
You see, that's what, so even this morning, me, uh, Lamar, and Ashley were talking about that, like kind of plugging out the matrix. Like we get into these like money issues with the nicer cars or mm -hmm. the big mansion houses and these, these notes. Everything is tied to the banks and interest. Mm -hmm. I don't think people understand like the bank is always going to win. Of course. But if you don't, if you're not disciplined, do you say, you know what, that 30 year thing, I could pay it in 15. I could pay it in 10. Mm -hmm. At least let me beat the interest a little bit. You can now plug yourself out the matrix, this bank stuff, and work on those passion projects, work mm -hmm. on those dreams, yeah, yeah. travel together, spend time with your family. We're not supposed to be working these jobs like yeah. to the to death. Like yeah, yeah. Exactly. when I did, I remember when I was at Rutgers and you know, the guy was talking to me about my retirement plan. And he was like, Yeah, man, if you stay at this rate, you'll be able to retire at 72. I was like, yeah. what? Like, don't look at me all happy like that. You just cussed in my face, 72. So, but now it's like, it's so dope that we have this group and we have these conversations where it's like, mm -hmm. the goal is to cut that time down, mm -hmm. but then also chase these dreams that we yeah. got. And also talk to different people. You know what I'm saying? Talk to people and tell them or inspire them that, you know, this is not the end all. You don't got to be in this 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 this, yeah. this wheel, this hamster wheel running yeah. around. Like... There's a way to get out of it. There's, Pete, like, what's so dope is Dave Ramsey's out there and these other gurus that talk to you about, like, creating the behaviors to, you know, save money, put down on real estate. Mm -hmm. um, what's the dang book? Richest Man in Babylon. All yeah. these things are out there for us to, yeah. to learn and understand. But I just don't think, sometimes I, I, I struggle if it's the people don't want to listen or is it just like, you know, is, it, is the concept too hard for them to get? Ultimately, people yeah. still gonna make their choice. There's okay. some people. Real estate's not for them. Real estate don't, don't. Even us sitting here, it's a lot of work. You know, mm -hmm. we're in the process of evicting somebody. We had a three thousand dollar job last month. Like, yeah. it, it's crazy. You yeah. know, but we could deal with crazy. Some people can't. You know, whether you want to be a business, some people just want to throw their money in stocks and work until they until they're sixty two. Yeah. That's your Which thing. You know too. what I mean? Like everybody's completely different. Yeah. So I feel like that's really what it is. And another thing. The entry level, and believe it or not, we we started at a higher, um, at the higher bracket going into real estate with the twenty five percent down, yeah. where people are able to like live in their houses. Do we, we're in like the New York market? It, it's so much more like that expensive going in. And it's like, yeah, no, see, like you're lucky. <laughs> but eventually we'll do it. Like yeah. when it's time for mm -hmm. us to get like our house, yeah. we're probably gonna get something um, like a fourplex or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. and then we'll move out and just get our little. But at least that's the plan. Yeah. That's the goal. You know what I'm saying? Like that, having that mindset. So um, we all talk to like different people that we kind of counsel mm -hmm. and talk to you know talk to them about their money journey or their hardships. What what do you feel has been the I want to say most challenging conversation you ever had to have with somebody? Challenging, yeah. challenging about their journey. Mm -hmm. People gonna do what they're gonna do. Yeah, yeah I'm saying. What, what do you think is the most challenge? What's what's one of the wor the weirdest? Most like, oh, why did you do that? It just be the people that like <laughs> yeah, you yeah. give them advice and they come to you like, save me, and I'm like, yo, I can't it's save too you. Late. When you sign that lease, it's over. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, yeah. maybe just swap a lease so you can go try to get the lease. But you got a 72 month loan? Yeah. Are you crazy? Like, yeah. what can you do? I just I like you cars. know, cars are definitely what people cars are crazy. Yeah, cars, cars. Because people will, you know, they. Oh, my old car broke down. I had to get this. I need, I need, yo, you got a two thousand. I need the two thousand twenty two though. But see the problem. I need a safe car because I got my kid. It's like, what? What are we driving? Like, what is everyone else driving? They're making it around, right? I need the twenty. Twenty two. But that goes back to even the banks. You know what I mean? Like the banks always gonna win. But it's just like you really don't need this new thing. Or like, and that's what I'm saying. It's the choices. Yeah, it's choice. The weirdest one that I had was when somebody is trying to justify that. I need to live in this luxury apartment. And I was just trying to tell him, like, yo, you should look at one fourth the income. That's usually like whatever yeah. Dave Ramsey says. Mm -hmm. and they're like, yo, nah, like this eighteen hundred dollar like one bedroom apartment, that's me. And I'm like, you do know that like <laughs> that that just think eighteen hundred dollars yeah. eats your income and mm -hmm. then you got these student loans coming. Yeah. So yeah. well, yo, some for business right now, like I don't gotta worry about it. Okay. And then, <laughs> so now when you see that void, right? So they, they signed the lease, and now it's the new Mercedes. But yo, I'm in, I'm in for Baden's. Like the loans ain't coming. Now, like Biden's lifting this thing up, man. Like yeah. the loans yeah, is coming back. Gotta, you, you so now I'm looking at home, homie. Like, what are we about to do? Nah, see, my best thing, I let people do what they're gonna do. 
Those same people yeah. will come back and ask you. You don't want to con them just a little bit. Nah, I'm good. Nah, nah, I got two. I don't got that time for that. <laughs> I got you. At the end of the nah, day, I, I need eventually, you're not gonna I need keep it. answering those phone calls because you're wasting. Oh yeah, time. I don't answer the phone you know calls. I just put so the, like, the eyes on Instagram. Okay. Like my Instagram DM. <laughs> you you doing some dose? I'm like, yeah, but I told you you could have done this. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? But you guys are nice people. <laughs> Try to be. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah. At the end of the day, it's all about your why. It's back to a Dave Ramsey. Very, oh, yeah, true. Very true, true, big true. thing, big topic the purpose. that he brings. The purpose that you have. Everybody's purpose is different. Yeah. Some people's purpose is just to live in the now. They mm -hmm. don't even think about the future. They don't think about tomorrow. They don't think about next month. Yeah. A lot of people haven't even had that real conversation of, when am I going to retire? Yeah. And at the end of the day, that was one of the main things we were trying to think about. Is like we really enjoy taking trips. Whether it started off taking road trips to mm -hmm. taking flights to different countries, it was like, how can we do this and not have to run back from Monday to go back into the office and go into work? It looked at different options. Real estate just happened to be one that was one of the many paths that we could take. Right. So that was the why. A lot of other people don't have that why. So you're trying to educate them on things that they can do. But their next thing is maybe flexing on somebody in a nice, in a nice car mm. or living in a nice apartment. Popping bottles in the club. For, that was me. For what? <laughs> you you like heard that. they can finance bottles now? What? Yeah, it's getting crazy. Don't do that. <laughs> nah, I ain't It's about getting that. crazy. They got a payment plan for the club? Yes, a oh, firm. <laughs> that's pretty smart. No, it's not. Charging interest that's on the crazy. bottles? <laughs> That's kind of smart. Do you get blocked that's, that's if you sad. don't make your payments? I, like, I don't even know. Now, somebody, comes, somebody comes it's to your house and breaks your legs. It's going to just be on your credit. It's, like, yeah, it's some, crazy. Some Armenian dude comes But that's the problem. The society wants you to believe like you can't afford anything. You can't even afford your iPhone. You got to finance it. Yeah. You can't even, even. It's so crazy because it would have cost us more to pay the phone outright than for us to like put it on through like AT&T to finance. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Cause remember we bought it and our friend was like, no, like it's actually cheaper when you do it this way. Yeah, Just like a car. Deals. If you pay the car outright sometimes, like um, I know my brother was buying a car like 30 grand, right? Mm -hmm. But then it's like, oh, if you finance it, it might end up costing you just like 25. Chill. Like, that's weird. Yeah, Total? no, that's well, how it goes. What about the interest? It's, it's, it's zero like they, interest. For the years. Like it's so kind of crazy right now. Yeah. They're, so they're it's like, looking okay. for people to, to like to, to sucker. The thing is, <laughs> Murphy, yeah. well, Murphy's law is going to happen. You yeah. miss a payment, and that's where you read you the terms. Hit. Yeah, yeah. That's like a credit card payment. You yeah. see, like the amount of interest that they can put on this. And you read the terms, and like if you miss this, they're just waiting. They're like, mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah. you one day late. And but you know over. what? That's the thing people don't realize when it, even when it comes to finances, and everything. It, it doesn't matter if it's us, little us, big old company. Everybody's banking on you to almost fail. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about these quarterly earnings. Think about, like, if we did those examinations on our lives and things like that, somebody's always out there waiting for you. They're making money and profiting off of you to fail. Like, mm -hmm. we, we get these mortgages, they're automatically sold. They get turned yeah. into bonds. And mm -hmm. so, they don't care. Literally, yeah. it's just a time, what's going on. Like, even the other day, um, just with Black Friday, all the market tank, you know, with just a fear of a new variant and things like that. Somebody's always waiting. Yeah. And then if you have the ability and the money at that point, exactly. that's when they pull the yeah. triggers. That's when, the that's when they're pulling, digging. Look at what happened even um with Zillow. You know, they're buying all these houses from Weird. people. Like, yeah. It's just crazy. But I, I mean, I knew that move was going to happen because data is the biggest thing. So yeah, if Zillow's yeah. out there and they got all the data to know. When the house goes up and stuff, yeah. it's like, yo, The man. hedge funds, too. Here you go. People are not talking. <laughs> they're not, oh, they're buying houses? They're, they're not that? releasing their Black, information what, of Blackstone. Called? Blackstone, They yeah. weren't releasing their data, but they've been doing it even before. And they yeah. were getting these loans at like 1%. I believe so it. So I want to know what's going on there. I believe Nobody it. talks about that. My thing it's is, crazy. like, we can't we can't beat these these companies, but yeah. if we free ourselves and then we work together, <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah. like, play the game. Yeah. imagine what we could do when it's like, I always say this, like, if we just got... 50k disposable yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we put our money together and we're like that we're, we go mm -hmm. to Zillow and say yo where's like the hottest land and we start doing development projects and stuff yeah. like that that's where I feel like I hope that it would it would get to but sometimes it's so hard to find a collective group like what we yeah. got yeah. you know what I'm saying but I do appreciate it and I think like having these discussions allowing more people mm -hmm. to see groups like us come together and you know just discuss these possibilities yeah. allows like for the next generation. Like mm -hmm. just imagine like my daughter, your son, like what they could do if we kind of do our part right. Yep, yep, like yep. we may not see that development project yet. But yeah. then these guys, like, I'm I'm scared for where they're gonna be able to yeah, do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But we just gotta you gotta hold steadfast. You gotta set them up. Right. So look, we're gonna close this out. I just wanna one question I like to ask uh the people that are on my podcast is where do we where I guess where do we 
see ourselves in like five years? If you're going to run five years, tell me a statistic about yourself. What did you accomplish um, in five years? Um, mm. More houses, not working my nine to five, play, um, following my passion, just like um, opening up a community center. Mm. That's what I see myself in five years. Big bank. <laughs> Take <Yeah>. little bank. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the same. So, yeah, not working anymore. If I am working, it's very low hours. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm thinking about doing contracting type of work okay. to yep. get out of what I'm doing on and just sell my, my, my uh, experience to people. Dope. And, yeah, just investing into real estate. Mm -hmm. That's definitely my passion. So as many units as I can. And more houses. People more life. Get those <laughs> Big things well. are good. <laughs> well, yo, shout out to y'all. Thanks for coming through to the pod. Shout out to Slick Productions. Mm. Follow Diddy Don't Financials. Follow Johnson Invest. Follow your boy Defri D. It's been a shot of discourse. And it's thinking that the junk of them a beeline boss. To one my girl time, you need me while be like us. Yo yeah, sit down from the cocky and even feel like bunch. Minus, roll up and split my feet, sweet like fudge. Mina, like me, I go come back and I feel tight chop. Minus, lights up the weed on, yeah. Dad, not another day of it, go again. Sleep for me, I roll bigger than a brown bread. And it bring me to the sky for me, sit the joint them. Bring me to the sky for me.